Now we've announced our Patreon and merch, I finally have more material for Seven Days of Science intros. Also, I'm currently a tad ill, so apologies. <laughs> Starting off the news this week, NASA has unveiled its prototype spacesuit for the next moon landings. I mean, there's not much to say about this one, apart from the main improvements of the suit, which are, as NASA states, improved comfort, mobility, and fit. It is designed to fit any user, which is something they are probably quite pleased about, because the first all-female spacewalk was called off in March because they couldn't find a suit the right size. Colouring is a bit weird though, it kinda looks like a four-year-old child has found it and decided they want to try out their new colouring pencils on making it look more like Captain America. Oh right, that's for the colours of the US flag. Huh. In other news, a team from Edinburgh University have stated that the warmer nights caused by climate change are causing birds to start laying eggs and making nests earlier in the year. The scientists say that this is because the caterpillar population is peaking earlier than normal with the temperature rise, which is a factor that previous studies have failed to identify. They also say that if the findings of the study were reversed, a reversed conclusion would be likely, as in if it got colder, the birds breeding could be delayed. Starting off the paleontology news this week is the exciting discovery of a brand new genus and species of dinosaur belonging to the Carcharodontosaurians, which means shark-toothed lizards. Meet Siamraptor suwati, a lower cretaceous aged theropod from Thailand. The fossil remains of this newly described animal are not especially complete, but they include enough for paleontologists to tell that this is a unique creature, with many characteristics of the bones that distinguish Siam Raptor from related dinosaurs. There are many openings in the bones of the theropod that reveal a notable pneumatic skeletal system in this species, and the dinosaur also helps to give us a better understanding of the early evolution of the lineage of theropods it is a member of. Also this week, the annual meeting of the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology recently took place in Australia, and something very interesting was reported there, evidence supporting the possibility of sauropods having beaks. This is actually an idea that's been floating around for a while, based off an analysis of Camarasaurus skulls, but now several more sauropod skulls have been examined from various different groups of the animals. The evidence in favour of this idea comes in the form of many long rows of sauropod teeth being preserved in the exact same positions they would have been in life but without any bones surrounding them, as well as wear patterns on sauropod teeth suggesting that they were embedded in a beak tissue, in addition to, at least in some species, the presence of small pits on the jaw bones that could demonstrate the positions of blood vessels that sustained the beak tissue when the dinosaurs were alive. The paleontologists working on this propose that at least the bases of the teeth were covered in beaks, which could have kept the teeth in position and enabled more effective stability as the sauropods ate tough vegetation. Of course, beak structures are already known in several other dinosaur lineages, but this would be a first for the sauropods, and could potentially mean that we have to revise our perceptions of these creatures' life appearances. Finally, an interesting paper has been published this week that hypothesises why early mammals became mostly nocturnal during the Triassic period. This study suggests that when mammals became smaller in body size at this time and hair evolved, along with an increased metabolic rate and therefore a higher body temperature, these smaller mammals had to become nocturnal in order to preserve the quality of their sperm, as well as to avoid overheating and losing too much water through evaporation. This idea is heavily based on assuming that, due to the lack of external testes, the need to maintain body temperature that sustained sperm quality was a major selective pressure, and therefore during the Mesozoic era, shedding enough heat to preserve sperm quality during the day was not possible for the small mammals, and only once external testes evolved was this constraint able to be overcome. Thank you for watching this week's 7 Days of Science. In case you missed it and were confused by the intro, yeah, we have indeed set up a Patreon and merch has been released. So go and check it out if you want to support the channel and get some awesome benefits as well. Anyway, we've got the Isle of Wight video coming this week, so start hyping for that and we'll see you on Sunday.